In this video, I want to introduce the very, very important concept of scalar and vector fields. Everything we do from this lecture forward will use uh, the concept of fields. And that's basically uh, what we're interested in as uh, engineers and scientists. Uh, we're interested in phenomena that vary in space and vary in time. Some of them are, are scalars, some of them are vectors, and then we represent those phenomena using this concept of fields. So we need a position vector r, so r is the standard position vector. That will locate where you are in space, that you're considering the, um, the, quant the, uh, the measure of that thing that you're measuring at that point in space. We need to know where we are on, in time, so t, t is the time. And then there are two types of fields. There are scalar fields and vector fields. So for a scalar field, as an example, say the temperature, okay? We would write the temperature at some point in space located by the position vector r. So that means we've already defined a coordinate system, uh, and then we have a vector pointing uh, to a point in space. That vector is r. So we want to know the temperature in that point in space. And at the time t, this is a scalar. But the r is a vector because we're in a three-dimensional space. So this is the temperature at the position x, y, and z, and at time t. So we usually write, in this instance, we usually write the position vector in terms of the coordinates, x, y, and z. So this is the standard notation. That's a scalar field. We can also have a vector field. And as an example would be the velocity of a fluid. So this, the first example could be the temperature of a fluid. The second example could be the velocity of the fluid. So the fluid is, uh, has a certain, uh, is flowing, so it has a certain velocity. The velocity can depend on where you are in the fluid, the spatial variable, and it can also depend on time. So we write the vector field as u, which is now a vector, at the point in space denoted by r at time t. Okay, so again, we've defined a coordinate system. And then this is a vector. So it has a first component of velocity, which is at x, y, z, and at time t in the i direction. Uh, plus a second component of velocity at x, y, z, and t in the j direction, plus the third component of velocity at x, y, z, and time t in the k direction. Okay? So you see when you expand this thing, it's quite long, but the notation is quite compact. Okay? Um, how do you find like velocity field? How do you find the temperature field? Usually you find it through a governing equation. Those are called partial differential equations. And um, these are what we say PDEs, right? PDEs, the plural of PDE. Um, for instance, um, for a velocity field, it could be what's called the Navier-Stokes equations. Okay, a system of equations that I got my PhD by solving numerically. Uh, for the electric and the magnetic field, it could be uh, Maxwell's equations. Okay, these are both for vector fields. 
The Navier-Stokes equation is for the velocity of a fluid. The Maxwell's equations is for the magnetic field, which is a vector, and the electric field, which is a vector. Or it could be something called the Schrodinger equation. This is an equation for what's called non-relativistic quantum mechanics. The chemical engineers need to learn about this. And um, it's for a scale of field that's called the wave function. OK. Um, let me give you now an example of a vector field. Uh, let me write it down here on the bottom. Uh, let's write down a vector field, B, which is a function of only two coordinates, x and y. So we're in the xy plane, so the position uh, vector is two-dimensional. And I will write that as minus y times i uh, plus x times j divided by x squared plus y squared. Okay. So this is a vector field. It's only a two-dimensional vector field, but it is a vector field. And um, it actually has a physical significance. This is uh, proportional to the magnetic field um, circling uh, an infinite uh, a wire containing a current, an infinite length wire containing a current. And the wire is pointing in the z direction. So this is a vector field. So it's interesting to see how do you visualize this vector field. So you can visualize it by at every point in the two-dimensional xy plane, you can draw an arrow in the direction of b. Uh, and the length of the arrow can give you an idea of the magnitude of b. Uh, let's look at the graph. So in this graph, the, um, uh, the uh, current carrying wire is coming out of the graph. And this is the circulating uh, magnetic field around the wire. The visualization uses arrows. And the arrows point in the direction of the magnetic field. And their length is uh, proportional to the strength of the magnetic field. OK. So um, in this video, I introduced the concept of fields. Um, these are extremely important uh, when you're modeling physical phenomena. You need to know how things vary in space and time. The scalar field is just a uh, scalar that depends on space and time. A vector field is then a vector that depends on space and time. Everything or almost everything moving forward, then we'll discuss how do we do vector calculus with fields. I'm Jeff Chasnov. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.